everyone welcome back to my channel i'm so excited that you decided to come on back onto this channel it's the fact that you didn't have to but you did that makes me appreciated so much if this is the first time you were seeing this please do click that subscribe button comment down below hit the like button do the things i don't even know what to say anymore guys i have not done this in so long i have not sat down in so long and the two or three dms i've received on some sis uh we are waiting for you there by the youtube i had to do this so i really 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 hope that you guys enjoy this video as you let me know if you enjoy being part of this family other than that you might have seen by the title of today's video that we are doing a birth story the plan was to have a birth vlog but you will hear that the events that led to my birth were not vlog vloggable if that makes any sense but I hope that you guys will enjoy this particular story. I promised you guys the story when I was still doing what's in my hospital bag. So now that it's almost six months later, I know, it's so embarrassing. Almost six months later, I am six months postpartum. Let me know if you guys also want a video on how the postpartum journey has been. Because let me tell you something. <laughs> let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, it's not a joke. So if you want a video about that, let me know. Right now, let's get straight to today's video and I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so let's start from the beginning, okay? I think every woman, when you find out you are pregnant, during your pregnancy, the one thing you are anticipating is your birth, right? Like, and the movies have made it, you know, the water breaks, we're screaming, we're shouting, it's pulling off hair, it's ah, it's pulling. All of that stuff so i for the longest time during my entire pregnancy was anticipating my birth i was like i'm ready i'm going to at this point i knew i'm gonna die because people were telling me you know right at that moment where you feel like you're gonna die that's when your baby's coming i was like okay i'm ready for the near-death experience listen dandy ready dandy jimmy i was so prepared guys but this is how things went down so during my pregnancy, I was obviously going to clinic, going to check up. So I was going to a clinic close to where I stay. And for the duration of my pregnancy, I was going to that particular um, clinic. Everything was fine. I was getting checked every two, three weeks. Listen, we had this thing down packed. My mom and I had a system. We already knew on the days we wake up, 5 a.m., the girls are up. Go to the listen everything was fine and i was excited because because everything was going so well throughout my pregnancy i knew for a fact that i do bless you i knew for a fact that if i'm healthy during my pregnancy um which i was and my baby was doing fine i was so excited that at least i'm going to get to have a natural birth you know because i really wanted my first natural birth you know so i was excited i'm like let's do this let's do this let's do this I think this was about three, four weeks, about a month before my due date. The nurses are like, babes, darling, your sugar. So I was like, what about it? They were like, no, my love, your sugar is too high. We can no longer be attending you. You can't come here for your checkups anymore. We're going to refer you to the hospital. From now on, you are going to do your checkups at the hospital because your pregnancy is high risk. All of the Sunday imagine going through your whole pregnancy everything is nice sweet beautiful I never had motion sickness I never had all those things my feet didn't swell listen the girl I wish you guys could see me I think I'm gonna insert pictures of how I was in a girl I was glowing okay the girl was gorgeous but towards the end it was ugly anyway I get what you are what you are no you must go to this battle so we're like, okay. They're like, yeah, no, but not tomorrow, as in like today. So I'm like, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this must be serious. So they referred me to the hospital. I remember they gave me the letter. They gave me back. If you've been to a public facility, you know, there's a book. <laughs> there is a book. If you don't know the book, <laughs> I don't know if you're going to relate. But the ladies who know the book. <laughs> so they gave me my file. They were like, girl, take your book. We're done with you. We can't attend to you. Your pregnancy is no longer a normal pregnancy. You now have a high risk pregnancy. I was like, cool. Took my book, went to the hospital, got to the hospital. They're like, yeah, no, they didn't joke. Your sugar is like really high. So we spent 
the duration of like those three weeks those three four weeks i was now doing my checkups at the hospital right and they were not finding out what's causing the blood to be like that the sugar levels were not making sense they didn't understand how i haven't given birth with those sugar levels so almost every other week guys i was getting my blood drawn because my numbers were not making sense like my numbers were not making sense so if you know the process of like drawing blood excuse me guys i'm drinking iron brew just because it's hot so if i burp so they were telling me all these things and they were like like this is this is it's troubling so they were like checking my blood i was getting blood drawn almost every week right now almost every week sometimes twice a week they say no the ones of yesterday the bloods mm -mm. come back today so that we can do the bloods today so you can get them two more like it it became so much and i think that's when i mean my pregnancy within itself there was just a whole lot of depressing stuff going on but right at the end of my pregnancy the things that happened and me actually now starting to realize that i might not get the birth i wanted i think that then started to depress me even more and the pain of getting my blood drawn just everything i started going through towards the end irregardless of the other things that were happening the the the, the depression just also, the process of drawing blood, guys, you guys know when you're pregnant, you eat almost every hour. The process of drawing blood, if you're going to go draw blood, for instance, if I'm drawing blood tomorrow, today from 10 p.m., I cannot eat anything until tomorrow when they're done drawing my blood. And they usually start around 10 a.m., 9 a.m. to draw my blood. And they draw about like four cycles. And each cycle is like two hours in between each other. So by the time I'm done around 12th around 1 i'm depressed i'm hungry i'm tired my arms are swollen so that whole experience i do think is what started to build the depression if that makes any sense so drew my blood i think it was in the last week at this point um i was ready to give birth i think i was in already like i was already 41 weeks 40 weeks 41 weeks at this point towards the end of my yeah my 41 weeks so i was just like why don't you just just take this baby out of me and i had to go for like another checkup and at this point the doctor was like you know what i'm not gonna draw any blood your bloods are uh they've come back the last bloods they've taken the sugar it has subsided um, everything kind of looks good however you are way overdue my dear you should have given birth last week already so what we're gonna do is because i remember it was a friday was it not my birthday it was a thursday it was my birthday i think I'm not sure he said um my last checkup was on my birthday that was my second last checkup yeah and then the next week um he checked me he was like listen i'm not gonna draw any more blood from you you've done enough of the blood drawing uh i'm not gonna check you anymore you need to be admitted we need to induce you this baby needs to come out of you because now you are overdue at this point you are carrying an adult and i was like i know right <laughs> i mean at this point i was done guys like i was done i was tired of being pregnant I was tired of having a baby inside of me um i was ready to have the baby out weeks ago and it was like two weeks later and nothing had happened so i was done so he said okay no it's fine come back the tuesday i think i went back the tuesday he said come back tuesday um or monday the monday come back the monday you'll take this form i'm going to write you an admission form they need to admit you and then they will induce you and then you will go into labor that was on the 19th right so on the 19th of september um i woke up in the morning oh then the nurses advised me that listen come around the afternoon time because usually by then the person who's supposed to help you with the drawing of blood um she's already done her rounds like her ward rounds so she'll be available to like kind of help you you won't have to wait so come around two three so i woke up that morning i woke up early um i think it started dawning on me that oh my goodness i'm actually gonna become a mom that morning i wasn't really emotional that morning um but it had hit me that and i think i was more excited than i was emotional i was very excited I remember waking up took a bath um looked around my room 
room i was like next time i come back here there's gonna be a baby like i couldn't i couldn't believe it i think i was very excited like the anticipation for my daughter was so unreal in a sense that like because she didn't come when she when we were expecting her to come the more the days went by without her having arrived like i was like so the anticipation was crazy and knowing that when i get to the hospital today they're going to induce me today and my baby's coming today to, that to me was like all right so um that morning woke up took a shower fixed up my room took my bags when my mom came fetched me around 10 we went to um, the grocery store i got snacks one thing about me i would get snacks <laughs> i think i bought groceries i remember i had like two bags of just food and i had like a bag i had a bag with like food which is like cool drinks I had gotten like cooked food from the grocery because I'm not, I don't know what I'm gonna eat at the hospital, guys. Also, my appetite. What if they only bring us food twice and me? I eat sixteen times. So what are gonna do? It? Do you understand? So I got like there was an actual bag with like food, food, and fruits and cool drinks and juice and water, and there was a separate bag of just snacks and chips and sweets and you know. Just the whole lot of everything. If you hear my baby in the background, she knows that we I think she knows we're talking about her. I think she knows. <laughs> so, um, we did that. We did that. I remember I had now, I think I had a suitcase. I had a, a her bag. Um, I had a lot. What else did I have, Granny? <laughs> I had blankets. I had bedding. <laughs> I had bedding. With a matching pillow. Listen, I had a lot. And then I had my girls there. <laughs> we got to the hospital. I remember like the lady sitting at the door of the ward where they're gonna admit. Well, get to the hospital. I first go and draw blood. The lady drawing my blood. I think it's because like I had my natural hair. I had no makeup on. I was wearing like this princess type dress, like this really girly dress. And I think she just assumed that I'm really young. Also, like when I don't have makeup on, I kind of look 12 go and fight with a tree okay i look like a teenager believe it or not <laughs> so i think she maybe thought i'm still young so she started saying to me you're gonna be fine you know i also had my child when i was a teenager you're gonna do well don't worry so i think in my in her head she thought so i remember like while she was drawing my blood and stuff like that then she saw my ring so she's like oh you're married i'm like yeah and she's like Oh, I'm like, yeah, I'm like 26, turning 27. She's like, oh, then you're going to be fine. <laughs> I remember literally her being like, oh, so you're like a grown girl woman. Okay, you're going to be fine. I'm like, oh, so all that advice, era. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, after she drew my blood, I went to the ward, right? Okay. It's funny because... The whole vibe when I walked into the hospital um, was so positive. I remember like from the security guard when I was going to draw my blood, like everyone was so positive towards me. It's like, I don't know what I was radiating, but everyone was, I remember somebody even stopped me, like somebody even stopped me, one of the ladies that worked there and she was like, you are so beautiful. Like you are so cute. Like I'm not even gonna lie, you are so cute. And then we had to like go to this desk to give in the forms and this lady said to me she's like um oh no this was now when i had already gotten into the ward and we're in the waiting room now i'm waiting for a bed and she said to me she's like there's something about your spirit there's something about your aura and i was like i don't know what this is but i think my daughter is radiating through me people were just being so nice to me and if you've been to the hospital people are never nice um but funny enough like my reception even from the time like i was doing my checkups at the hospital the nurses were always nice to me um people were just always nice to me like i didn't struggle with like a rude nurse or a rude security guard or a rude receptionist or a rude doctor i never had those kinds of problems right so then i go, then now we are on our way to the ward 
I remember my mom is waiting for me outside. I take my bags. First thing, the lady sitting at the door of the ward says to me, the lady's like, ha, <laughs> Hey, so I'm like, girl, what do you mean? I'm gonna be here for quite a while. I'm gonna need my stuff. What's your point? She's like, no, 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 girl. They're basically going to steal from you. You can't come in here with all those bags. You need to leave some of the bags. Now, I'm like, what do I leave? Because there's the suitcase with me and my daughter's clothes. There's my toilet bag with my toilet sheets. I need to bath. There is my groceries. I need my groceries. I can never to send them back because I won't. <laughs> there's my groceries. And then, what else was there? Then there's my bedding. I need my bedding, guys. I need my pillow. I need my, 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 my duvet. I... I what I gonna do it? Um, so now I remember like being there with my mom already like I'm already scared now cuz I'm like These things were my security that no matter what happens at least I have all my things you understand So this lady's like no girl eh, eh, what home? And I'm like ah, ah, Get in need and she's like I'm like okay cool so I think I turned my mom back with the suitcase and then I had a nightdress in the smaller bag. So okay, I just need my nightdress and my gown. And then the smaller bag had all her other stuff. It had some nappies and they had it in case I give birth today. I took my bedding because one thing about me, you won't catch me sleeping. You won't catch me sleeping where I'm not comfortable. People who know me know my comfort is come number one. <laughs> my comfort is come number one everything else is coming number two sorry so i took my bedding i took my pillow went in right so i go in there i'm really scared we get in that room um there's a girl so the we get in like the waiting room these ladies they take your file and they take your information and they check your blood pressure when they're so there's like other ladies sitting there one of which her water had already broken like there was water around her but we're not gonna have that conversation now we're not Okay, we're not doing that. And then, hey, and then, um, there's a curtain, these ladies are sitting, there's a curtain closed, and there's a woman screaming behind this curtain, right? And one of the nurses that's like helping is like, hey, but I'm going I say, God, if this is my time to die, if you're taking me like this, no ways. This woman was screaming, right? And she's behind the curtain. We can't see her. And then she's like, "Ma, Helen, Tusi, Helen, Tusi." And the lady's like, "No, Rita Julamo, Rita Julamo." And they talking to her from behind the curtain. No one's going to check. Like, is this woman still alive? Like, what's happening with this? They're just letting her scream behind that curtain, and we're just sitting there waiting for our beds, thinking, "Is this how they're gonna treat us? Like, is this how we're? Lord, is this how I'm going out?" <laughs> literally that's where i was at like is this is this the end of the road for me because if this is the end of the road for me lord i'm gonna need you to tell me <laughs> because ain't no way i'm going out like this <laughs> ain't no way i'm going out like this i remember like at some point like my heart i wanted to just open that curtain and just be like babes what's wrong by the way you guys the lady behind the curtain ended up opening the curtain getting out of that bed on her own in a, a pajama top no bottoms no undies and she was like it's fine i'll just help myself but then so that they can put us so zen on and we're just sitting there like just respectfully with my big belly um oh then i remembered i forgot my charger so i ran out again to get my charger luckily my mom was still funny enough still sitting there and i remember like the situation with the girl crying I didn't expect to see my mom still outside sitting there like actually just taking my chances i remember getting outside and i was just like i'm scared there's a lady there and she's crying and they're not helping her and i just started bawling right remember i just went outside to take my charger i started bawling my mom's like no one is gonna treat you badly you're gonna be fine just be friendly and if you need help ask for help nicely um but we're praying for you. No one is going to mistreat you. And let me tell you something. From the minute, like I told you, while I was sitting there, one of the ladies were just like, we're just so in love with you. At some point, they, I don't know how they knew that my daughter's a girl. 
um but they were like they started they gave me a name i was mama princess i guess i was mama princess in the world from like day one they named me mama princess hence her name princess um i finally get a bed this is like now two hours later guys mind you in this waiting area where we're sitting the one lady that i had arrived there and her water had broken she was going through the most right and she's like sitting right at the end and the biggest blunder the biggest problem the biggest mishap in the whole situation is that she could not speak english this woman was not south african she was not i don't know where she was from i think she was from malawi she couldn't speak english she's waiting for a bed these nurses are not giving her the best time because they know she can't speak english and this woman is sitting on this bench on top of her own water this woman's water has broken and she's in pain she's like mm, mm, mm. and the nurses just keep on looking at her like girl get your life and she's like mm, mm. And i think at some point she's like she got up and they were like hey where are you going and she's like i need the toilet i need toilet and they're like no sit down you can't go anywhere you want to i think the nurse was like hey oh but look, let's have a movie hey Oh, if you keep on down your toilet, you can't have And this girl's like, mm, mm, mm. I think at some point, like one of like the major nurses, she came by that room and she was like, what are you feeling? So she told the nurse like what she's feeling. She was speaking so softly and she was in so much pain. You guys, I felt so bad. And the nurse was like, come. I think the nurse could tell that they are no, this one. <laughs> these ones something is about to go down they took her to another room but guys it was just scenes i remember someone else walked in this lady walked in with so much drama i guess she was already in pain she said she had been in pain since last night and she walked in there with drama she's kicking she's screaming and the nurses were just like shut up hands can you guys help her no they were not so eventually I get my bed, guys. I get a bed, now I'm ready to be induced, right? One thing about your girl, she had a whole wardrobe, right? So I get like my whole wardrobe out. I had my birth outfit. <laughs> what you know what I mean? I had like this cute night dress with like a matching silk gown. I was ready, okay? I was ready. Funny enough, there was like the actual ward with like the rooms with like all the other people they took me to a secluded side of the ward that was a lot more quiet i don't know why that happened and i think it had like the beds looked new i was like okay already i was like okay come on jesus i think like my daughter guys like she was my good luck charm like that girl was radiating in me through me around me because the favor from the moment i walked into that hospital right and i can't even like credit anything else i can't credit that maybe i paid extra money there's no money that you pay guys it's a public hospital um i can't credit anything all i can credit is literally god not to say that a woman who maybe had it like harder a woman who didn't get the treatment didn't have god on their side but all i'm saying is on my end i felt it and i felt it felt like my daughter was winking at me saying mama i got you so it felt good and then um then they, the nurse came to me they checked me they put the, the monitor around me and then they were like unfortunately because your blood test results have not arrived and have not returned we can't put you on any medication so we're not going to induce you today however um tomorrow morning your blood tests will arrive and when they do arrive then we'll induce you because we need to see your blood tests your results in order for us to know what medication to actually give you so i was like well that sucks like i was so ready so i remember spending like that day it was in the ward that i was in there was actually only two of us and it was just me and her and we were there shame chatting it up she told me a whole lot of things that i wasn't trying to hear <laughs> she told me a whole lot of things i wasn't trying she told me a whole life but either way it's cool <laughs> and then the next day um I woke up. One thing about public hospitals, they woke you guys up all at five. They switched on the lights around five a.m. They were like, "Yeah, bath time." I'm like, "Cool." I ran into the bath. I wanted to make sure that I'm one of the first people because those baths are not that, you know. And sharing a bath with like 
almost the hundred other women, you know. So the lady I was with, funny enough, she called me. She's like, "Come in here." So it was another little like small bathroom, and it was a lot. I didn't see it when I had arrived in the ward. So luckily she spotted it because she had been there two days earlier. She had been there, so she's like, "No, no, no, come, come, bath this side with me." And I went in there and I bought it there and that bathroom was just like a lot cleaner. I mean, it wasn't the best. It wasn't the cleanest, but it was a lot cleaner. So I remember washing my face in the sink. I got in the bath quickly, got out. I put on my cute PJs and then they were like, okay, today we're going to move you to the actual ward because we're going to medicate you. So around 11 a.m., they took me to the actual ward now where everyone was. Still a pretty decent bed. You know, one thing about me, I got there whipped out my bedding did the most whipped up my pillow i had a little cushion i was doing the most like i think i was doing too much <laughs> um and then they gave me i think they gave me my first dose around 12 right so how they do it is they give you a dose of the medicine like maybe this much every two hours and basically what that is supposed to do is that is supposed to i guess make the baby want to come out you know so i took the first one at 12. i took the next one at two i took the next one at four i, I remember texting like my mom the whole time like nothing is going on like i'm not feeling anything i took the next one at six i'm not feeling anything took the next one at eight i'm not feeling anything at some point one of the nurses for the first time ever in my existence of being pregnant i was checked no, I'm lying. The doctors had, one of the doctors had checked me, but he didn't check the way that nurse checked. That nurse yanked her finger up. Girl, if this is TMI, the woman who have given birth, you guys know this. I had never felt so, I remember texting my mom. I'm going to actually find that text and I'm going to put it up here. I remember getting so emotional because she checked me. She's like, oh, get it, don't think I am. Like, I think about four. And she's like, I go check. And she was like, and I'm here like, girl, she's like, hey, hey. <laughs> and guys, I'm sorry, I had to get some storage back on this camera. So, um, she takes me, I text my mom, I'm like, I think we need to take her to jail. I think this woman just violated me. There's absolutely no way this is not a criminal offense. This woman has finished me. Today I've ended. <laughs> Today she has ended me. Guys, you cannot tell me that's what we are all going through. And people were telling me, nah, you get checked like one time, two times. If she had come to check me for a second time, I would have asked to go home. This I'll give birth in my own house. I will I will not accept violation. One thing about me, I know my right to. Oh, you cannot do that to me. I say, child, this one is dangerous. I remember every time I look at that nurse, I never looked at her the same. Because I'm just like, which one is this one? My friend, if I if I slap you, you touch me again. So she was like, yo, girl, you haven't even dilated. I'm like, wow. At this point, so many hours had gone by. I took my last dose around nine. <laughs> I'm lying. I took my last dose around past 10-ish. Then they put the monitor around me, right? So one thing I didn't like about that monitor is that you have to sleep a certain way. You have to be still. I didn't know how to stay still while I was pregnant. And every time they put it on me, like, they, it, it would give them a hard time because I guess I wasn't listening. I guess I just, I'm not a, a good learner. <laughs> I'm not the best student, you know, I couldn't sit still and like I'm just like oh, I'm not comfortable and they're like no you need to sit this way so that you can be able to hear the baby's heart beating and I'm just like okay guys, fine <laughs> um, so I remember like laying with this machine on for like almost 45 minutes and at this point I needed to pee and one of the nurses comes in and she's like um, and I can check him to your house so she checks it, this is now after like 45 minutes I'm like yeah and can you take it off because I think I need to pee and then she checks it, and then she's like, I'm coming back. She's like, huh? And then she's like, I'm coming back. And then she goes and she fetches one of the other chief nurses, right? This is the one nurse that everyone was, like, kind of afraid of. Like, I didn't mention this lady because she was telling people where to get off. <laughs> she was actually telling people where to get off, right? Like, yo, she was telling people where to get off. 
then she comes she checks and she's like i don't know what she says to the other lady and the other lady takes the machine off me and then they say and then i hear her saying to the other then she says to me uh when i have all that like umbilical cord so i'm like yeah <laughs> i need to go be and i think she realized okay i don't think she realizes what that means um and then as i'm walking out to go in so she's like yeah it's fine go pee because i think she looked at me she's like i don't think you realize what we're saying she's like okay cool go pee and then as i'm walking out i hear her then saying to the other nurse yeah no heartbeat in how can i heartbeat in one older like an umbilical cord so i'm like okay let me just go pee like there's a lot going on here <laughs> i think at some point i was i was just like okay there's a lot going on here i need to pee i went i peed I come back i'm about to get back into my baby and they're like no babes there's no getting back into the baby when i have half a heartbeat oh god let's go umbilical cord i'm like yeah but i wanna how hannah had beat oh god let's go umbilical cord what am i you know remedy doctor we are theater okay <laughs> what do you mean there's well i think at some point i was just like no I'm not the one. And she's like, yeah, so I'm like, I'm like, okay. I start taking off my clothes. I remember I had a bonnet on and I had like a cute hair. I'm telling you. I had a bonnet on and like a cute headband with the hair, with bunny ears. And I take off my clothes and then I'm like, I'm like in my undies and they're like, no, you're taking off everything. I'm like, okay. I take off everything. And they're like, yeah, Kabula bonnet, okay? I Kabula bonnet. They're like, eh, lid goes. I'm like, okay. Back lid slippers. I'm like, whoa, hold up. This is how I came when my mother born me. <laughs> is this how I'm gonna live? What's happening? Are you guys signaling me that this is the end of the road for me? <laughs> and then they like, and pack your things. I'm like, ah, what's going on? They're like, pack your things. So now you can imagine. I'm pregnant. I just got hit with the news that my child is caught out to dying in my belly. Uh, I'm naked. <laughs> and then they say to me, pack your things. Guys, you heard I had a luggage. Here I am, packing my things. I remember like I'm shuffling now, I'm looking for my gown. I throw my gown over my shoulders that like, this is not how I'm gonna go out. This is embarrassing. <laughs> ward with me this ward is completely open they are watching everything that's going on my curtains are not closed and all this drama is unfolding right in front of them and they are just watching i became the movie i'm like i pack my things they're like pack all your things babes your things are going they bring like a black bag but the red ones and they start putting my things in there right they start putting my things they take my bag they start putting, they're like bedding. I'm folding my bedding. They're shoving my bedding in there. My pillow, they're shoving my cushion, shoving the cushion. They take toilet bag, they're shoving. I'm now in the midst of all this happening. Now I'm thinking, wait, I need to call my family, right? I dial. First person I dial, ah, Dololo answer. I'm like, ah, there's no way. I'm gonna call my brother. I call my brother, my brother pick up, picks up the phone. No, the first person I dialed, I remember was her dad, no pickup. I called my mom um, and she had told me that she's going to have load shedding. She's like, I'm going to have load shedding from now up until this particular time. So you won't be able to call me on WhatsApp, right? And at this point, I had a dongle. I had not bought a type. I'm thinking nothing's going to happen today. I was chilled, guys, right? I call my brother. My brother picks up. I'm like, dude. I don't remember what I said to my brother. I just remember I just started crying. Like, I said, my brother was like, hello. Ah, your girl. She started crying. At this point, they're like putting a drip in me. They had, they're putting the catheter in me. And the, the lady's like, we need your phone. Like, we need your charger. We need your phone. We're packing your things. So I'm like, give me a few seconds. I'm getting the drip. Come on. Come on. It's busy. Yay. Guys. I call my brother. Remember, first, my brother was like, hello. I say, <laughs> and he's like what's going on i remember saying theater heartbeat i remember saying no heartbeat theater fetch my things 
Because now I'm looking at the black bag with my things. What are they going to do with my things? And I, I could not structure an actual sentence. And my mother just said, okay. I don't know what happened after that. They put the catheter on me. I remember then, like, I think the nurse, because now I'm not, I'm not crying. Because now I'm scared for my life. I'm uncomfortable, my whole body's shaking because of the catheter. The lady who had put the catheter in me was so rough, guys. My whole body started, like my whole body went into actual shock. I started shaking. My whole body like started shaking. At this point, guys, like everything was going bad at the same time. I remember just laying there with the catheter because I don't know how to lay. And because it was so uncomfortable and it was so painful, my whole body was like shivering. I was cold. I am naked. I'm on this bed. I'm not covered. They've taken everything of mine. They've taken my phone. I've said three key things to my brother. I don't even know if he heard me. And I'm scared for my life. And now I remember laying there and they were like, now we have to wait for the doctor. And I remember laying there and I felt so hopeless. Like I remember laying there shaking at some point my whole mind went blank at some point like i remember i shut down like everything went blank i remember just laying there shivering and i remember just repeating to myself my child's not gonna die 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 and just i kept on chanting that and remember the doctor walked in and I can't even I couldn't even look at the doctor and I was just laying there naked and he says to me, um, Miss Kumeja, unfortunately there is no anesthesiologist um in the hospital right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put you in an ambulance and we're gonna take you to another hospital. And I was like, there's no way. I remember that I started crying. I'm laying there. I'm shaking. I'm cold. And I remember saying to the nurses, I remember the first nurse came and I was like, I'm cold. And she was doing her own thing she took her machines she left i told the other one as well i'm like i'm cold and the third nurse that ended up coming i didn't even need to say anything she saw how shivery like i was shivering and she just came and she brought like a sheet and she put it over me and i'm just like oh no now i'm like guys my hair was a mess because i had taken out my my little bonnet situation like i was ready to push looking cute and i was not looking cute okay and the doctor comes back and the doctor's like, because I remember being so hopeless and I'm thinking, my goodness, this is already traumatic. Now I'm still going to get in a cold ambulance and they're still going to take me to another hospital that I'm not even familiar with anymore because I had already been comfortable with this hospital. Like, God, what are you doing? And I remember he came back like about 10 minutes later and he was like, Miss Kumeda, we have good news. There's an, 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 an anesthesiologist that's actually in the hospital we just found out so you're not gonna go to the other hospital i'm like oh, thank god one thing about god he loves me <laughs> but i was still there just shivering just going through the most guys i do not want to lie um i remember like the nurse that everyone was afraid of at some point she came to me i think she could tell how terrified i was at some point she said to me she came to me i don't even know what prompted her to come to me because like I said, she was like the meanest nurse in the ward. <laughs> and she's like one of the chief nurses. And, you know, she's those women when they walk in, you're like. I remember she came. To, I think she saw just how scared I was. And she came to me and she's like, listen, you're going to be fine. Your child is going to be fine. This happened with my second baby. And he's alive. He's breathing. He's a very healthy boy. You are going to be fine. Calm down. And I remember her saying those words. It's almost like she was an angel, literally, because she, number one, she's the last person I expected to be that nice to me. But also number two, she didn't need to reassure me, guys. It was, it's not her job to reassure me. Her job is to do her job. So the fact that she actually went out of her way to come in that room and reassure, like she, she walked into the room, she closed the curtains so the other ladies don't see or hear what she had to say. And she literally reassured me that I'm going to be fine. Okay. Cut to, they bring the stretcher, I get on the stretcher, and they pull me out, right? The one most comforting thing is that by the time I got out of there, guys, looking as messy as I was, I remember them pushing me in that stretcher, me being afraid. My mom was there, my sister was there, my brother was there. I think that's the one thing where, like, I'm just like, had they not been there before me going into that theater, I probably would have still went into that theater afraid i probably would have still went into that theater 
unsure i remember like when they pushed me out i was so scared and so anxious and i looked a mess i remember like my brother after everything i heard all my brother was saying besides the fact that i was crying and i was going to go get cut his only thing was why does her hair look like that i think he just he didn't know me to just be so unlookable guys i was unlookable I don't want to lie. One thing about my brother, if he had a brush on that day, he probably would have brushed my hair because there's no way. I don't think anyone can even imagine. Guys, I looked a mess. Okay. I looked a hot mess. I'll insert pictures though. Don't worry, Alice. You'll see. Um, so they were like right there while they were pushing me in the stretcher. They were right there just reassuring me that, girl, we are here. We love you. We're going to wait for you. And that to me... Guys, if ever you are in a situation like the one I was in, or if ever you are expecting, have a support structure, like people that you know you can trust. And get, get this, these people, you might not be as fortunate as me to have siblings and a mom that is present that would kill for you, but get friends, get, 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 if, you, if you're fortunate to have a partner that's there the whole step of the way, you need that. And if you do not have that, I pray that you find comfort in God. If you don't have that support structure, I pray that you at least find comfort in God. Because in that time, you need comfort, guys. In that time, you need reassurance. You need support. You need people who are saying, we are here. Don't stress. We are here. God in the theater. I met my anesthesiologist. I remember the one thing I was afraid of was that big needle in my back. I remember she put that needle in my back. And then she was like, okay, Miss Comedia, we're done. And I was like, oh, we're done? Okay, is that all? And she's like, yeah. Um, I'm like, oh, I thought like, this is the worst part. She's like, no, you actually did very good. And thing is, while she was doing it, I was talking. Because she was so kind to me. Oh my God, Dr. Kanye. I remember I even went to find you on Instagram. And I even DM'd her. And I was like, I was going to find you. She made that theater experience so besides my doctor was also very great she made that experience so amazing i remember walking in there she was so welcoming they put the nurses and she introduced herself and she did what she had to do i didn't even feel those needles on my back i remember laying there she told me okay you're gonna start feeding numb i'm like i can feel numb oh my gosh i can't feel anything she's like yeah that's what's supposed to happen girl and i'm like oh my god i like it and she's like what are you feeling here can you feel this and I'm like, no she's like girl i'm like girl <laughs> I had fun, guys, in that theater. If I could do it again tomorrow, I probably would. Anyway, so um, then the process started. My doctor walked in. Um, he greeted me, of course. He's like, yeah, I just saw you a few minutes ago. This is me again. Don't be shocked. Don't think this is someone else. It's still me. Um, and you're still going to be fine. And the process started. If you've... Um, had a c-section before you know you will not feel anything there are women who say that they felt some stuff i'm sorry <laughs> i'm really sorry i can't even imagine how that might feel i didn't feel a thing um there's times where you can you can feel tugging you can feel pulling it feels like somebody shoved their hand inside of you but other than that you don't feel anything at some point um i felt really nauseous because it felt like someone was pulling or was pushing my insides out my mouth but before you go into um, the theater, they actually give you an injection and they tell you that this one is for nausea because when you get in there, you're going to get nauseous. And I didn't understand it until it actually happened. Like there were times where I felt like where I would like be like, <coughs> literally like gagging. And Dr. Kanye is just like, girl, you're fine. And this is how she talks. She's like, you're okay. Don't be zanene. Oh my God. Now you guys know my first name. Anyway, she was like, you're fine. Don't be zanene. Girl, you've got this. This is how she talks. And like, guys, this is what she was saying to me. And I was just like, I like you. I want to like take you with me everywhere I go. She's like, no, babes, you're good. And she would keep on asking me, how are you feeling? Are you feeling cold? And I'm like, yeah. And she's like, how is your back? Can you feel anything in your back? I'm like, I still, she's like, okay, cool. At some point, I needed her to fix my, my head, to fix my, my head was like not comfortable. And she's like, okay, let me help you. Like, ah, uh, guys, where can we find her? Can we give her an award? I love her so much. Wow. Then they pull my baby out. And one thing about this girl, she didn't cry. So I remember like once she came out, I remember like Dr. Kanye was like, she's so beautiful. Uh, oh, right before her, 
coming out, I felt my body going. <laughs> so I'm guessing they were like trying to pull her out, right? And at some point, like, Dr. Kanye was like, you're a doctor. <laughs> and the whole bed was like, so I'm guessing that's when they were pulling out that she came out. And then it was quiet. It's funny because I could somehow feel she's out now. And I could see Dr. Kanye is now looking that, oh, she's out, right? But there was no cry. And the silence in that room was so real, like literally so real. And then I remember her going to the back. And I remember one of the nurses saying, ah, dimples. And then I heard my child was crying. And they, they were like, and then they brought her in and everyone was just going on about her dimples. And then they brought her and she was like this little white ball and with like a big face. And I'm like, who is this? And they're like, there's your child. And I'm like, oh, like there's your baby. And I was like, that is not my baby. She looks like a white person. That is not my baby. She looks like a white person. And they were like, no, this is your baby. And I remember they handed her to me. And when she was laying there, come she's like complaining don't mind say hi everyone say hi everybody you want to go back to granny which one do you want so yeah i remember like as soon as they put her on i remember seeing her and i was like oh my girl oh my girl and then the nurses were like princess dimple and then they put her on me and instantly that name came. Like I had known that I might want to like name her princess because that was like a thing. But as soon as they were like, ah, princess. And she was on me, like you were on me. How can you do that? Yeah. <laughs> and she was like on me. And that moment guys, when you hold your baby for the first time, and your baby is on you and your skin can feel their skin i can't even explain it like i made a promise to myself that i'm not going to get emotional during this video and i'm not going to get emotional but there's absolutely nothing like it i remember like for the rest of that night she just laid on me the whole night and i mean i was having a hard time feeding her and i couldn't move for most of that night because i still had like medication inside of me and whatever like i remember that's another story for another day, child. But I had a hard time feeding her and all that stuff. But it was magical. Meeting this little girl was magical. And my... <laughs> I need to finish. And my birth was traumatic, to say the least. Maybe the way I'm talking about it is very comical because it was really traumatic. And having family there and having people that really cared about okay you guys so uh, most of the drama actually happened the next four days the next three days while we were in hospital that's my daughter and if you guys want to hear all that drama and all the trauma i went through for that three days let me know in the comment section below i am more than willing and excited to tell you guys about it me there made it that much easier and meeting my daughter made it that much worth it like i remember holding her like the next morning when i got to finally dress her when i got when i got to finally dress her and i got to finally like spend time with her and i'll take pictures of her it was all worth it like i would go through that experience all over again i would deal with everything i dealt with all over again because she was just worth it right mama we are more fascinated with the tree and mama's face <laughs> so yeah you guys that is my birth story me giving birth to this girl who is now a teenager mama that's not what we want to do okay let me push it yeah. there we go i actually moved it closer <laughs> I thought I was pushing it away. I'm actually moving it closer. That's great. Mamas. She's staring at my mom. Say thank you everyone for watching. I love you. Say bye guys. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> guys, I love you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video.